Pen. It is good to see you. Is it? Truly, it has felt like I've been absent years instead of months. Much has certainly changed in that time. Do you find yourself back in town for any particular reason? In search of something or someone? If you're asking if I came back to take a wife this season, I'm afraid the answer may disappoint. Although, if there is one thing I learned on my travels, it is forever to expect the unexpected. Am I mistaken, or was Eloise walking arm in arm with Cressida Campbell? As you said, sometimes time moves rather quickly. I do not wish to see a citrus colour ever again. Sour colours indeed. But what has brought about this sudden desire for change? I cannot live at home any longer. I must take a husband before that happens. It is time. Pen. She did not look well, did she? The Featherington girl. Why concern yourself with her? You have a visitor, miss. Pen. Colin. What are you doing out here? I'm just getting some fresh air. I am in my third year on the marriage mark with no prospects to show for it. What would you call that? Something wrong. Pen. Between us, I mean. I wrote to you this summer, as I always do, and well, you did not respond. Admittedly, very few did, but if you are going to make me say it out loud, I miss you. I'm sorry for intruding. I have heard you at my mama's ball last season, telling everyone how you would never, ever court Penelope Featherington. Because I embarrass you. It just never occurred to me that you of all people could be so cruel. And I'm very sorry for my callous comment here last year. It pains me to see you upset. Then perhaps you should not have come. Every year, I pray, I might finally feel that way amidst the marriage mart and that comfort never materialises. Whistle down. You are mentioned. Well, if a husband is what you see, let me help you. Help me how? And what I have learned is that charm can be taught. There is nothing more I want and to earn back the favour of the one person who has always, truly made me feel appreciated. Do you have any idea who she might be? Are you saying you want my help after what Lady whistled down the road? Whatever she has said about him, she is wrong. She has never been more wrong about anyone. I just pay her no heat. Indeed. I do not. But trust me, if I ever find out, I will make sure it is her life that is ruined. I should like to see your skills as they are first. But I have none. You know how to wave your fan, flutter your lashes. Often that is all it takes. How delightful to see you all. Such, such splendid weather we are having. Friends. I shall see you soon. Are you quite sure you wish to resume my lessons? I would not be angry if you found me to be a lost cause. The truth is, you do not need a lesson. You already know how to do this. I assure you, I do not. Do you remember when we first met, and you were so very charming about it, teasing me? Mercilessly, in fact. And I think I know why. I'm the perfect person to practice on. You don't have to be embarrassed, you know me. That's exactly why I will feel even more embarrassed, because I know you. Pen, living for the estimation of others is a trap. Once you break free, the world opens up. You make it sound so easy. Forget what is wrong or right. Imagine what you would want to say to me if I were a suitor, without concerning yourself with how I might receive it. She seeks to take a husband this season. <laughs> a husband? Penelope. So unlike her. Perhaps she has changed. Her eyes. Most remarkable shade of blue. Yet somehow they shine even brighter when you are kind. She's not seeking a husband in you, I hope. No, I'm only helping her find one. I, I might mm. say something like that if you were a, a suitor. Well, that was uh, rather direct. Oh. Good evening. I marvel at how one can feel such intimacy, but also such great distance. How's your hand? Much better. <gasps> Damn! It's Colin, your hand! It is nothing. It's not nothing. Stay there. Thanks to you. Let me. I'm sorry again for reading your writing, but you truly write so well. You make it seem effortless, which is so difficult to do. I would very much like to read more one day, if you would let me. Shall we make an agreement? I will consider it. If you speak to at least one lord tonight, 
Perhaps we should put us for the death. Lord Basilia. Lord Basilia is a Viscount. And you are Penelope Featherington. Do not forget that. What happened? His horse recently died. You are joking. I am not. <laughs> Colin. Do you like it? I did enjoy myself. Very much. Mr. Bridgerton, we were wondering why an eligible gentleman such as yourself would help a spinster find a husband. Especially someone who is so beyond hope for success. <laughs> mm, it's actually all rather sad. I bribed her to give us a moment to learn. I had to see how you were. Eloise! Did you tell anyone of my helping Penelope? In truth, I brought this on myself. A sad, stupid girl who believes she might possibly have a chance of love. You must not say such things. I confided in Cressida. What could Penelope possibly have done to warrant such maltreatment? It's good to see you. Yes, this is it's good to see you. Colin, did I ask you something? Of course. But I apologise for not coming to see you. Earlier. Oh, it is for the better that you did not. Is it? Isn't it? Would... Would you kiss me? We cannot continue our lessons. Uh, I agree. <laughs> Good. Hmm. Uh, just so I am clear, what is your reasoning? Exactly, is it because of what happened between us? No, <laughs> no, um... But I assure you, nothing of the kind will ever happen again. How are you? I'm well. Surprisingly well. Colin Lord Debling has shown an interest in me. Your lessons worked. It's been me low. In fact, it somehow allowed me to stop caring so much about how I am perceived and I was simply myself. In fact, it may be best if we keep our distance for now. But I thought you believed the best foundation for great love was friendship. Indeed, I do. It is how your father and I began. And how did you and father know it was reciprocated? Because he gathered the courage to ask. How dare I ask Mike, this fictional gentleman, ask for the young lady's hand? If, if, if you were writing the book, that is. Well, I suppose he would have to ask her mother. And if her mother gave her blessing, do you think she would say yes? Colin, finally free from your admirers. There is a question I have been needing to ask you. I, Miss Featherington, I believe it's time for our dance. Lord Debling has requested my permission to propose. Did you give it? It is only a shame you might miss the fruits of your labours. I hear Penelope may be getting a proposal tonight. Lady Featherington will not stop telling anyone who will listen. Tonight? That's rather quick. Likely because of your help. Your brother is walking right up to Penelope and Lord Debling. Do you mind if I interrupt? Oh, I should only take a moment. Pen? You cannot marry him. You hardly know him. I know him well enough. And I hear he is leaving. For three years. I know that already, Colin. It takes a year alone to get where he is going. I said I would help you find a husband, but I cannot stand by and would you make a mistake. The only mistake was me ever asking for your help in the first place. Speaking of Mr. Bridgerton and the feelings between the two of you. <sighs> Colin Bridgerton would never ever have feelings for me, it is laughable to think as much. We are friends, nothing more. But would you like it to be more? What if I did have feelings for you? 
But these past few weeks have been full of confounding feelings. Feelings like a total inability to stop thinking about you. Call me a friend. I'd very much like to be more than friends. 